home of the garage was closed. So you just walk into the place? Oh, I was just looking it over. Why? Oh, for my own good reasons. I see. Well, I would be obliged if you would leave my car alone. And if I want music while I work, I'll have music while I work. Now, you just listen now here. Now, listen. If you're going to jack a car up, make sure the other end is wedged and blocked. Especially if you're working under it. Because if anything happens, it'll fall on you, you'll get crushed. And with that radio blaring, nobody will hear you crying out. Good point. Common sense. My name's Fiona Cunningham. Is it? So what's yours? Calder. Ken Calder. You're not interested in this place, are you? I mean, I know they're advertising for someone to take it over. Well, unless you're the local factor, I don't see that it's any of your business. <laughs> no. Maybe not. Just that I don't understand why anyone would want to saddle themselves with a white elephant. And a mucky one at that. This garage has never paid its way, you know. The whole place wants bulldozing out of the way. At least that's what my mother recommended. And where is it, huh? <laughs> She's sort of Lady Laird. Defunct now, of course, but she isn't the board of Glendarrick Estates. They own everything around here, the whole works. Oh, that's very impressive. Oh, you need a new fan belt, and uh, I can see where the oil's leaking from. I can fix the oil leak, but I doubt if I could find a fan belt for this thing. Fix it? Is that an order or a request? I'd be very grateful if you'd fix it for me. Sure. But I don't know. No. Oh, hang on. Oh, Mrs. Cunningham. It's okay, Mrs. Archie. Mrs. Cunningham's here. Mm hmm. Thanks, anyway. I've been trying to find you. Mr. Langerman's on his way here. Good grief. Why? Well, I don't know. I got a call from Glasgow Airport to say that he's just flown in and he's coming straight on here to Glendarroch. He wants to see Mr. McIntyre. Without a word of warning. Does Alan know? Yes, I got him on the car phone, but he's up by Ard Vane. It'll take him ages to get back. <sighs> right. I'll go up and change. Ring up to my flat as soon as Mr. Langerman arrives. I'll stall him until Alan gets here. Have the weekly returns and the yield reports ready. And call Alan again. Tell him to hurry. Our chairman makes me nervous. Started out to be such a nice day, didn't it? I don't get it. You obviously know exactly what you're doing. You know, good mechanics are in great demand nowadays. You could get a job anywhere. So why come to this dead end? Because that's what Glendarroch is, you know. Real dead end. You have to be at least 83 to get any sort of satisfaction out of this place. Well, don't screw a minute, will you? And there are hardly any cars. I think that's why the last place closed down. Dead loss. Well, someone's got to do the repairs. But look at the place, who'd want it? You know, the old woman that drives a local bus even does her own repairs. I'm telling you, be wasting your time. You know, you're jumping to an awful lot of conclusions, young lady. You can't really be interested in this place. I mean, if I were to you, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. You can thank your lucky stars, you're not me, do. Mr. Langerman. Is Mr. McIntyre in? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, he was up at the Crofts, but I phoned him and he should be on his way down. Then I will wait in his office. Perhaps you would tell Mrs. Cunningham that I'm here. But I expect you were about to warn her in any case, hmm? Well, I... Thank you, Miss Seaton. 